Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another screencast by your Earth Science teacher, Mr. Stano. Last time we left off, we were talking about agents of erosion in general, having to do with the atmosphere and hydrosphere of the Earth, and how gravity is the majority or the biggest driving force with a lot of these agents of erosion. Uh, when we left off, we were talking about running water and how it can possibly shape and change sediment and transport it. Running water is the primary agent of erosion on Earth. It is what moves a huge amount of material over massive distances for pretty much 24 hours, seven days a week, uh, pretty much nonstop on Earth. Even in dry places, running water can be a very huge force in shaping that landscape, as we can see here with pictures from the Grand Canyon uh, and with the Colorado River shaping and changing that landscape over time. Running water, like I said earlier in a previous screencast, rounds and smooths out the rocks. As running water flows over those surfaces, it carries very small particles with it, which are going to weather away or round out any jagged edges. It also makes the rocks smaller because all these edges are broken off. Here, this is typical riverbed sediment that we might see. And notice on every one of them, rounded edges. It's probably, it would, you would probably have a very hard time finding anything with a real jagged edge. And we can see here, this is probably the closest one we have to it. But even then, you can see how it's been rounded out over time. The longer they're in the water, the more they're gonna get rounded out. Here, we can see this action of the stream continually falling over this surface. So as it continues to fall over and over and over, it's gonna smooth out this leading edge of that rock. Erosion by water, particles are carried in several ways depending on their size. So we can see here we have a number of different particles, some small, moving up to large. <laughs> These particles are going to get carried in the water in different ways. They will get transported, but it will be a little bit different. There are three ways that materials are going to be transported in waters. We're going to have solution where sediments are basically dissolved in, like salts or ions. Now remember, in class, we were talking about when you weather down a material, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Ultimately, those particles can get so small that they get dissolved in water as ions, these minerals, and that is actually what led to the creation of our oceans, or how salty those oceans are. All that material is transported from the land masses down into the oceans as sediments or basically as dissolved ions. You can also go in as suspension. Sediments are suspended floating in water. And these are going to be our finer sediments. They're neither at the top or bottom, just kind of moving through. Then we have sediments that are rolled or bounce along the bottom, also known as saltation. Where they're bounced along the bottom. And when they bounced or they're dragged, a lot of the jagged edges are broken off. Uh, but these are also our larger particles that this happens to. Smaller sediments, like I said, are dissolved or in suspension, as we can see here in this diagram. So all these small particles right here are just kind of making their way through the water stream. These particles, notice the bigger ones, they're kind of bouncing along the bottom, getting hit into the bottom. That is known as saltation, and that's the rolling or sliding along the bottom. Then it comes back to uh, page six in our earth science reference table. We have gone over this diagram before, we've used it in class, but for, for some of us as a little reminder how to use it. Particle diameter on our y-axis, it's a logarithmic scale, which some of you are not that familiar with, so we'll go over a little bit more in class, but also along the vo bottom, we have our vo stream velocity, also logarithmic scale. Along the right-hand side or y-axis, the dotted line represents the size range of whatever particle. So boulders are gonna be 25.6 centimeters and bigger. Cobble, from this line to that line. Pebbles, from 0.2 centimeters to 6.4. Sand, 0.2 to 0 0.006. Silt, 0 0.006 to 0 0.004 centimeters. And clay will be anything smaller than 0 0.004 centimeters. So these dotted lines are quick reference to find a size. You can follow it over and get to that same number on this side, 
but the really the right hand side those are the quick reference that we use uh, we can use these to calculate the minimum velocity of a stream needed to carry any real any really any sediment but in this case we'll look at a pebble so if we want to know what the minimum velocity needed to carry a pebble we're going to go to pebble minimum is the smallest so we're going to look at the smallest pebble right here we're going to use this we'll go across to the line where it hits and then from there we move downwards and you can see that lands nicely on 10 centimeters per second that would be the minimum velocity needed to carry a, a pebble the maximum velocity to carry pebbles well we would go to the biggest pebble size right here and you would go down and we could see there that 200 centimeters per second would equate to moving the largest of the pebbles and that's pretty much how we use this chart there's not much more to it than that there's a couple of questions coming up you could practice with these we're not we're going to save this for class but definitely go over them now so when you come to class we have an idea okay minimum velocity you need to carry a boulder or the largest particle size that can be carried by a stream flowing 400 centimeters a second. So in this scenario, they're giving you the actual velocity. You have to work backwards. Same thing with this one and this one. Okay, before we move on to the velocity of stream, we need to know that streams, basically that movement of water, they're gonna carry sediment, but their velocity is gonna really depend on a number of things and one we've already spoke of in class. The slope is the gradient of the stream. Basically, the angle or the the angle that it's on. Very similar to like a slide. If you have a slide that's very steep, you move faster. If you have a slide that's not, you don't move very fast. Also, the discharge of the stream. The volume of water or the discharge will help determine how fast or slow that that stream is moving. So here we have a flat gradient. So that, that river is going to be relatively slower. It'll, in return, it'll also have a little bit lower of a discharge or potentially could have a lower discharge versus a steep slope, faster moving water. And remember, a discharge is the amount of water moving through a given point in a period of time. So if we have a steep slope, more water will be moving through that point in a given period of time. So you'll have a higher discharge. And we're gonna end here before we look at the changes in velocity in the stream or the dynamics of it. So I hope you enjoyed this screencast. Uh, get, be prepared for velocities of streams. Bye-bye.